Nobody wants to go back to the way things were. What is needed um, uh, is trust. That's the key factor than anything else. We need to trust one another. Part of the agreement was that these paramilitary groups were going to disappear. 25 years are still going, and it is as, as active as they were 25 years ago. I mean, we need a proper, open investigation into the whole of what went on here in the past. Without that, it's another cruelty that's putting it on to the next generation of, of young people who are coming through, who shouldn't have to be fighting the case for something that happened sometimes up to 50 years ago. I think one of the most important things is we don't ignore the past and try to forget it, because I think that's a big mistake we've made here. The Good Friday Agreement was signed and it was seen as a magical fix-all and it really wasn't. Living in Belfast, you know, during the Troubles was a tough time for everybody, but as a teenager, we knew no different. So I love Belfast, I love the people. Uh, obviously, things are a lot better than what they were before. Hate the weather, the weather's rubbish, but I love Belfast. That's my city, my home's here, my business is here, and my family's here as well. It was one of the major hotspots, you know, in the UK and if not Europe. They said it was part of the four Bs that people did not visit. You had Belfast, Berlin, Beirut and Bosnia. And Belfast is one of those cities that had a lot of problems regarding terrorism, gun attacks and bomb attacks. I think people want to learn about it. I mean, this, they've seen this on the news through the years, so it's all about education. We get a lot of people from Southern Ireland, <clears throat> a lot of people from the UK, uh, Europe, America, Australia, basically all over the world. And anybody who comes to Belfast, it's the political tour, they want to learn about the recent history of what happened here. This is 2023. These people here, they aren't ready for these to come down. Still things come over the fence. These present days, stones, rocks, bottles. And this is what we need on both sides of our community to stop. Stop teaching the kids the hatred. And maybe one day the walls will be able to come down. People don't have to live in the shadows of them, but the fear is there and not ready to come down. We need to trust one another. There's always a barrier up. 
I mean, we are, res- we are restricted to where we can and can't go because of our religions. You know, as I said, I'm a Protestant. I go into the Catholic area every day, do the tour. Would I go into a Catholic bar for a pint of beer? No. Because I'm, you're worried. If somebody finds out you're a Protestant, that they might confront you, you mightn't be welcome. Bullets came in this side, and some of them came out that side. Um, damage to my lung, to my spleen, to my spine, to my um, to my femur. All sorts of damage. So I was going in and out of consciousness, basically dying on the chair. And that was that. Northern Ireland at one stage was supposed to have had the most people with post-traumatic stress disorder on record now. It's obviously a place that had 30 years of low intensity conflict as it's called, but it's actually to the individual. Um, it's high intensity, it's in your face. You live with it every day, wake up every morning, and then that gets passed on down to their children because the people can't cope with their pain, they can't cope with their injury and their children then start to pick up what's known as transgenerational trauma too. So we are a, a damaged society. For many, the struggle to survive was made worse by losing work. Paul Gallagher is another random victim. It's a, it's a big pus-filled boil that keeps on getting bigger and bigger over the years. And it's full of injustice, it's full of grievance. And so what we need to do is clean the wound and then it'll heal. I think I actually walked out at, at one point. And just brings the trauma back, really. Victims want this over. Victims want closure. Victims don't want to be going to the court every year they want to be fighting for justice every year. They want the justice. They want the truth. They want all these things. But what the government's doing is just saying, no, victims aren't getting anything anymore. And that, that's just not good enough. They're all laying in the sand to move on. That's my opinion. It's not going to change the past. We can't change the past. The past has happened. But the future, we need to have a brighter future for ourselves and for our children. But again, not everyone speaks like the way I speak. If I had a, a if somebody had killed my father, you know, and the, the murderer is still on the streets to this day, I'm wanting justice. So I can see where people are coming from.
just been there. Frank, make sure. No, that's uh, about, uh, that's about six or seven. We're going to see these. Right about that age. As politicians for here, from here for years, right, engage and practice sectarian politics, which my family disagreed with. Um, now they've went a stage further. The sectarian politics that they were engaged with caused a lot of thousands of murders. And now they're saying all those victims don't even deserve an investigation. This wouldn't happen anywhere else in the world. has affected my health massively. I've had hip replacements, spine operations, and it's been explained to me that after all these years, trauma does develop in the body and comes up in some forms. It's affected my mental health. You know, um, I was attempted suicide. Um, in a state that's controlled completely by our militaries under their control with everything. Nobody can speak up about the crimes, the, the drug dealing, the racketeering, extortion. Nobody can say anything. And if they do, uh, they get attacked and put out. So this here place, this is uh, our local community centre. Um, this here is meant to be for the community, but the local power militaries used it. And the way the power military used this here is uh, their base uh, to control the community, and the police allowed it to happen every, every Sunday. Police in Northern Ireland have used water cannon tonight as more petrol bombs and fireworks were thrown on the seventh night of violence on the streets of Belfast. Police say the clashes between Catholic and Protestant communities last night were some of the worst violence they have seen in recent years. And correspondent Emma Vardy has the latest. The Good Friday Agreement's completely failed. It never addressed issues and tensions within communities. If both our communities are completely impoverished, there's people using food banks, struggling to heat their homes, everything. And focusing on these kind of identity issues completely takes away from it. And when riots and these flare-ups happen, it's, there's almost a fetishization of the violence here, and it's, oh, they're going to go back to the troubles. But that's not the case. Like, every other week, there's a bomb scare. We're just used to that. Um, it's never went away, those tensions. Are But it is not mandatory at the minute in our curriculum to learn about the Troubles and the Civil Rights Movement. And it's particularly important to stress that there was a Civil Rights Movement. It wasn't just a war of two sides. And I feel like if young people on both sides of the community properly understood the fight for civil rights and where it came from, the ideals of young people would change and there would be a lot more understanding. 
the statistic is there's more people who have killed themselves since the Good Friday Agreement than died during the 30-year war. A huge reason is failure to address the conflict and the war that ha had happened. You know, when you put nearly two generations through a civil war and then sort of act as if it never happened or try and just pretend it didn't happen, the impacts, PTSD, and all the sort of psychological issues and problems that are going to arise with that just haven't been addressed. Um, and all that plays its part then in us having these horrific suicide um, statistics. One of the great issues with the North was when the Good Friday Agreement was signed. We almost decided that that was it and we were going to move on and ignore the past, which has just left families still fighting for justice 20, 30 odd years later. And that's, it's, would be selfish for me to say, well, I wasn't born then. I don't want to think about it. And you have to learn from the past to build a better future. society that isn't segregated is obviously ideal but what you have to understand about the north and Bel Belfast and Derry and the cities in particular is they're segregated on purpose and they were segregated by the British government so it really isn't as simple as just saying right Catholics can go to Protestant schools and vice versa because our communities are so shut off so it does require a complete restructuring of society so, I mean, I still wouldn't really feel comfortable walking through a loyalist area on my own. So it's a, it's a genuine fear. Just a disclaimer, anyone on their phones, Baggy, will be deducted five points during questions. So if anyone's caught cheating, they'll be deducted five points for the round. We live in a society that's struggling and the best way to fight that is to fight it together and I think that's what's going to bring young people especially together more than anything because young people are going to university and they can't afford houses and they can't afford to move out and that's what's going to bring young people together rather than I'm Irish, you're British and we're going to argue over it. I think young people care less and less about that now. I don't think I will see a huge fundamental change in society here in my lifetime. I just don't think it will happen because it's not just about identity, it's about so many other things. So even if tomorrow we were all, we all loved each other and we all got on and we were all friends, there'd still be so many issues here that need to be addressed.